Week seven, a ton of blowouts. Football wasn't great, but that also means a ton of points for a lot of fantasy users, especially at the running back position, but also a lot of injuries to deal with from week seven. We'll break it all down here on Who's Hot, Who's Not, presented by Brother Printers. Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you folks on the CBSSports.com Fantasy Football Series. And as always, we turn to our CBSSports.com senior fantasy writers. This week, Jamie Eisenberg joining me in Miami. And uh, Jamie, we'll get to other running backs in a second, but let's start with the ones from Monday night. Lawrence Maroney got put on in injured reserve he's done for the year Sammy Morris filled in but now he's injured we'll know the extent of that later in the week Kevin Falk then Jarvis Green Ellis what do you make of the situation here they had 257 combined rushing yards on Monday but what are you advising users to do with the Patriots moving forward well I think you saw that Sammy Morris is a very capable fellow and he's proven that throughout the last couple of years when he's been healthy that he can really carry the load and, and last year before he had the chest injury he was going to probably be the guy for the majority of the season with Lawrence Maroney struggling with that groin problem and then you know not coming on until the end of the season and the postseason run just a tremendous loss with Maroney and just a real disappointing season for a guy that came off a great postseason you know four game five game stretch there toward the end of the year and was really hoping to be a good option for fantasy owners but now you look at it as you have to release him in all leagues he's not worth holding on to in keeper leagues at this point if you have Morris or if he's still available, pick him up. Otherwise, you know, if he's hurt, uh, which you don't know with the Patriots, they might not tell us until the day of the game uh, on Sunday. It could be a situation where you go out and pick uh, Ben Jarvis, uh, Green Ellis, or you hope to see if Lamont Jordan is back. Kevin Falk, I think, is going to be the immediate beneficiary if, uh, if Morris is out for an extended period of time. What about Matt Castle? Had three touchdowns, the equal amount that he's had all season. Is he back? Well, I think it was just a good matchup for him at home. You know, we expected this. Last week against the Chargers, the Chargers defense that really couldn't stop anybody, and then they did a good job against Castle. But as we saw, you know, the big thing for the Broncos was when Champ Bailey left that game, that took away uh, one of their only real key defensive players, Dre Bott. Bly didn't play very well covering Randy Moss. But this is what I think we expected from Castle for the season. You know, not to be a high yardage guy, to get the ball into the hands of Moss, get the ball into the hands of Wes Welker. I think he can do that going forward, but you just don't know what's going to be. Is it going to be a 250, one touchdown, two interception game, as we saw a couple weeks ago against the 49ers, or is it going to be a situation like when he faces a good defense like the Broncos, he could have the opportunity to put up good stats. I wouldn't trust him as anything more than a bye week replacement, or if your starter is injured, let's say a Carson Palmer or a Matt Hasselbeck, and you're desperate and you're sort of playing the quarterback, you know, pick up on a week-to-week -week basis, then a guy like Castle can be good when the matchup's right, but otherwise you just can't trust him on a week-to-week -week basis. Jamie, I started this by talking about how great of a week it was for running backs. Let's talk about guys you're definitely starting. Lendale White, Chris Johnson, if you have them both, though, are you starting them both? Well, I think you can when they face the Kansas City Chiefs. I think you can start anybody when they face the Chiefs. So looking ahead to Week 8, if you have Thomas Jones and Leon Washington, get those guys in there because you saw what the Chiefs' defense looks like. You know, they really haven't been able to stop anybody. I think that Carolina game a couple weeks ago where D'Angelo Williams went crazy, I think Jonathan Stewart, had he not fumbled going into the red zone there, he probably would have had a touchdown as well. So I think if you have an opportunity to play these guys against a good matchup. But listen, they have a good matchup again against Indianapolis, which can't really stop anybody on the ground either. Lando White's going to be more of the touchdown guy. I think this was sort of just, you know, an anomaly that he's not going to really continue to put up yardage totals like this. Listen, if Lando White breaks through the line of scrimmage and you can't catch Lando White, that shows you how bad your defense is. Chris Johnson's going to be the guy that still gets the majority of touches. He's still going to be the guy in there on first down. But we saw them alternate series. You know, I think that has to do a lot with the injuries at wide receiver to Tennessee. You know, no Justin Gage, no Justin McCarrens. They knew they could run all over Kansas City, and that's what it was. So I'm still starting Chris Johnson if I have him in every league. Lendo White's more of a, you know, low number two, mid number two type of player. Definite flex option. If you're starting three running backs, he's definitely in your lineup. What about Steven Jackson, Thomas Jones, Ryan Grant? They all had nice, solid week sevens, but haven't had great seasons tease or was that a start of something uh, moving forward well I think you know you look at each individual player you know Thomas Jones I think they the, the, the disappointing thing, if you have Thomas Jones and you were looking at that Raiders game, they went away from him way too much. You know, he was eating up huge chunks of yardage, had the opportunity to score there, but that went to Leon Washington. Steven Jackson, you know, I think this is a situation where he's been building to this point, you know, coming back a little bit slow from the groin problem and the holdout during the offseason. Now he has a quad strain, so hopefully he's not hurt. 
Uh, Jim Hazlitt did say that he expects him to play, but we'll find out as similar with Sammy Morris during the week. And then with Ryan Grant, again, the Packers continue to feed him the ball. He didn't have the good yards per carry uh, two weeks ago, but I think you saw against the Colts, this was something that I expected him to do. The Colts, again, they can't really stop anyone, especially on the road. I think you see Ryan Grant going forward. He's just starting to get back into shape. You know, another guy dealing with a holdout situation. And then we'll throw Willis McGahee in there as well, you know, as a guy who had a, a good game. But I think that had a lot to do with Jason Ferguson, the nose tackle for the Dolphins, leaving. The Ravens' offensive line was able to push them around. Jamie, let's quickly move into two other positions real quick. Calvin Johnson led fantasy users or all wide receivers in standard scoring leagues fantasy points with just two catches. Can you really count on a 96-yard touchdown reception every week? No, you can't, but I think Calvin Johnson falls in line with guys like, you know, Andre Johnson, Steve Smith a couple years ago when they were really the only true weapon on their team. You know, listen, David Carr was not a good fantasy quarterback, but he still managed to get Andre Johnson a lot of fantasy points. I think Dan Orlovsky is a very similar type of quarterback. You know, I, I think Jake Delholm's better, obviously, when you're talking about Steve Smith, but still, you know, a guy that could throw for about 185 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions, and all of that 185 or the, the majority of it, you know, 115, 120 of it goes to one player. Uh, you know, we saw Mike Furry make some plays. You know, I think he's going to be the, at least in the, in the short term, he's going to be the guy. I think Sean McDonald still will also benefit as well with Roy Williams now being in Dallas. But I think they just need to start establishing the run there in Detroit. I mean, Kevin Smith, you know, he always seems to break at least one big run, but he's not getting 20-plus carries. I think if they give him 20-plus carries, that will open some things up in the passing game because maybe they can establish something, control the clock a little bit. This will be an interesting game for Detroit this week, you know, to see what they could do. I think they have an opportunity against Washington, you know, to, to, to continue to try and get Calvin Johnson involved because he is their best player. You know, you have to get him. Uh, at least at least more than two catches. I mean, let's put it that way. Get him five, six touches, make sure the ball is in his hands, and that'll help Orlovsky, you know, continue to develop as a quarterback. Jamie, real quickly, the two New York quarterbacks, Eli Manning, Brett Favre. Uh, a couple of sluggish weeks, Favre more than Manning. Either one of them still number one quarterbacks moving forward? They are, but mostly because there's not a lot of good options out there at this point. You know, when you're talking about a lot of fantasy owners starting guys like Chad Pennington and Gus Farratt, you know, and sort of scrambling with the J.T. O'Sullivans and, and even Matt Castle, uh, although Castle obviously played well Monday night. I think you look at these guys, they still have a ton of talent around them. And I think with Favre, you'll get the one good game, two bad games, two good games, three bad games. You know, it's almost like he was prior to last year in Green Bay, his three previous seasons. And then Eli, Eli Manning, listen, he's always going to be around 180, 200 yards. You know, uh, a great game for Eli Manning is about 250 yards, two touchdowns, no turnovers. But he's typically about 200 yards passing, one touchdown per game. You know, that's just the type of quarterback he is. So he's not an elite number one quarterback he showed that a little bit this year and in the postseason but you know throughout his career it's almost like that's the basis of what you have to go off of and I think that's what you have to count on going forward all right Jamie Eisenberg we'll talk about other number one quarterbacks that maybe have revived their careers and maybe helped fantasy users as well this week in move makers thanks bud sounds good talk to you later and folks don't forget about fantasy football today each and every Sunday only on cbssports.com live every Sunday beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern that's fantasy football today for Jamie Eisenberg I'm Jason Horowitz take care folks